Okay, so next we are going to look into something called Okay, the first thing is so I'm sure like all of might you already heard Gaussian random variable right many many times. So let's formally define that Gaussian distribution we are going to denote it as with the symbol mu sigma square, where mu and sigma square are the parameters like like earlier we had p n as the parameter for the Gaussian distribution mu and sigma square are the parameters and here mu is a real number and sigma square is a positive quantity and it could be also take zero value. Now this is we are talking about continuous random variable right so we are now going to define the probability density function of this random variables for a Gaussian random variable we are going to define its density as of x and this is provided my sigma square is strictly greater than 0 and if it is a sigma square equals to 0 then it takes a degenerative format in that case it is simply going to be of this form 1 if x is mu so this is if sigma square greater than 0 otherwise we are going to it takes a degenerative form where it will have only one possible value at x equals to mu and uh, 0 otherwise and its characteristic function is given by function exp So it so happens that uh, for this Gaussian random variables with parameters mu and sigma, the mean turns out to be the parameter mu and the variance turns out to be the parameter sigma square. So we are just going to call a random variable Gaussian with the mean something and variance something. So the mean is nothing but that parameter mu and uh, sigma square is the other parameter. Okay, so here if you look into this, this is a PDF and this function is valid for all R as for if for all R for all x belongs to R and uh, now let me know if sigma square is not equals to 0 then my CDF is going to be defined like this for all x if not sigma square is 0 then it has this format and its characters functions are given like this. So let us just because this is one of the most popular distributions that is used 
let's see so let's say this is my mu here and this is my x and this is my x so just looking at this function here in variable x is this function symmetric in x about what about mu just by looking at this you can see that uh, because this is a square term here it will be symmetric about x so whatever and it goes on like uh, goes on like it is uh, defined for it does not look symmetric uh, but fine it is symmetric and uh, suppose let us say this is for some sigma square and mu. So, suppose I increase this variance sigma square how do you think this lobe will look like? I will keep the mean same suppose I want to have another random variable Gaussian random variable with the same mu but uh, let us say it has a variance which is larger than this it is going to be the this lobe it become fatter right like uh, and it will like uh, maybe like uh, something like this maybe this sigma 2 square is going to be larger than that but now if you have a some sigma 3 which is going to be smaller than sigma 1 how it is going to be so in this case it could be like it is going to get thinner and eventually if you try to make it sigma square to be 0 it will be just this just this a delta at x equals to mu this is going to just take the value of 1 and it is going to be 0 ok. Yeah, so, in if it is uh, sigma square equals 0 this height is just going to be 1 that is the only point where it will have positive mass and a 0 everywhere fine. So, I have a Gaussian distribution like this where you want to use it you know it is very popular right where it is used or where you think it is going to be of natural use. Or you feel that uh, I, I cannot imagine anything where this can be used. Huh? IQ distribution of uh, humans, animals, humans ok. So, what is the range of uh, IQ? But range ka hai, 0 hota hai ke negative hota hai? 0 maximum kuch bhi? Uh, is there a, so is there an upper bound on IQ or anybody somebody can have infinite IQ? Theoretically infinite. Theoretically infinite. But then uh, one side is fine right like negative to nahi ho raha hai. So, 0 to infinity. So, this one is by the way I have defined it has also negative values here right. So, if you have only positive values maybe you do not want to use it right. What could be other exam? Yeah. Yeah, but again if you just uh, if you want to begin with you know that uh, the height is going to be some in the range let us say some 2 feet to 6 or 8 feet and it is never going to take a negative value right. Uh, but, but still yeah. So, we can cut it off and that side and then scale the function. 
you want to cut it off and uh, Yeah, you can condition, but before conditioning, I'm talking about. Yeah. A game of gambling. Yeah. Where X is going to take a total profit or loss by the end of some particular. Yeah, fine. So maybe that is one possible thing. Like, let's say you are like a big, big, big angel investor. Maybe you can make billion, billion dollars. Or if your your investment goes dish, like you may. Make negative billion dollars, and uh, so you have a big, big range, right? Maybe. Tolerance. Other application is in fact tolerance design for the company. Tolerance design. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. Can you make this more concrete? Example. So suppose uh, we are manufacturing nuts and bolts. Hmm. Like we have set up uh, the mean value to be something suppose let's take fifty microns. Hmm. So we just don't want to you know uh, decrease increase that tolerance. We are uh, taking that to be point one or point uh, point. Let's say point eight to be mm -hmm. so that there is not the manufacturing effect or something like that. Okay. So another example I can think of is like let's say some kind of. Uh, uh, Deformation with temperature, right? Like, I can apply temperature can be both positive and negative, right? In uh, in some critical applications, temperature can have a wide swing. So, if you are going to apply this positive temperature, how your deformation or whatever the related quantities look like, and when the temperature goes below negative, how it looks like. So, there are again like it is just about that. As you can see, that it it finds many many application. But it has this need to have both positive and negative value. But that's not a constraint. Like you can always you can adjust about your mean and take care and so as long as you feel that there is something heavy concentration about a particular value, and then things slowly die die down around it. Maybe this is a good thing. Even in case of a population or a height distribution, like height. Let's say this is like about uh, five feet. There is maximum number of people around five feet, right? Most of them. Like then other guys maybe like just uh, die down. Maybe if I go uh, here itself like around five point five, and if I just take it like maybe four point five here, already significant uh, reduction is happening. So this is in that way at least in this region. It is still like looking more like a Gaussian distributions, right? You can still continue to use that, but provided that you appropriately. So, you I mean right away when it, the Gaussian should come to your mind, whenever you see that there is a, something like there is something something going to be symmetric around some value, and there is a going to be like as I said diffusion or dispersion about it, both on the left and right hand side. Then you will do so. Okay, fine. You you may feel that okay, this is a good, but I don't know how how concentrated this lobe should be. This should be thin or it should be big. That you find it from your data. You do a lot of experiments and see that which what how you going to fit your data so that you get the right parameters mu and uh, sigma square. So fine. So this is one thing. Now we are going to see another distribution called exponential. And the PDF of this distribution we are going to take it as f of x goes to Lambda times e to the power lambda x, and this is going to be for all x positive, and it's a characteristic function.
So this distribution is going to look like if you give me lambda, so this is going to start at x equals to 0, this is going to be what? Simply somewhere it is going to start from lambda and uh, where it is going to go, it is going to go to 0 as x increases. This is my f of x. Suppose in this, I increase my lambda. Let us say this is for some lambda and if I increase my lambda here, what do you think uh, how, how this another function is going to look like? So at least I know that if I am going to increase, so let us say this is for a some lambda 1 and let us take a lambda 2 which is bigger than this lambda 1. At least I know this parting point was lambda 1 the other point is going to be lambda 2, it is going to fall much faster right because uh, this is coming in the exponential term. So maybe it will start faster but it will decay much much faster, okay fine. So I have a such a probability density function which is taking positive values, I mean which is defined on uh, positive real half. So where you think uh, such a and you see that as x increases this is going to like fall rapidly, it is falling actually exponentially fast. So where do you think such a distributions can be helpful, what kind of things you would like this to be used to model. For example, let us say some component in machine what machine like component what? Let us say I have a component I want to predict the lifetime of this machine like uh, fine let us say I have a bulb and I want to see how long this bulb is going to survive before it breaks up. So it may last uh, let us say it is count let us say if let us count a life in terms of second it may last 100 second 200 seconds or maybe 1000 seconds and uh, maybe like 36,000 seconds or whatever like after that uh, it may break right. So you feel as you see that if you are expecting it to survive longer and longer that probability is going to be falling rapidly right. So that is what uh, in that case maybe this kind of uh, exponential distribution is going to be much useful. And in that case if you have two let us say bulbs one is of a better quality than the other and uh, so which one you want to high assign higher value of lambda, the better one or the poorer one, poorer one right with the, because with that it is going to decay much faster. So another good thing about uh, this exponential distribution is it has the memoryless property we already discussed. So we discussed memoryless property with respect to which distribution, geometry, geometry distribution, geometric was a discrete distribution. So it so happens that this is a continuous distribution but it also satisfies that memoryless property. What does that mean? What does that mean? Suppose you have the random variable x is going to take value larger than x plus t given that it has already taken value larger than t. If x is memory less what do you expect this quantity to be? You expect this to be just probability that greater than or equals to s. So do please verify that if you have CDF like this, it is indeed like if x has a CDF like this, this satisfies this property, okay, okay. Next is uniform. So 
uniform I'm going to denote it by B where my and uh, the PDF of this is for all editing and then I'm going to see otherwise and its uh, characteristic function is is given by e to the power g u b minus g u a by g u minus b minus a. And again its mean is going to be u. You can work out that its mean is going to be simply the average of the, the points a and b and its variance is b minus a whole square by 12. So what it is saying is like suppose if I have a let us say I have I want to assign let us say I am interested in some interval a and b. I want to say that anything in this is equally possible. Okay, that means what it is saying that for all x in this range, all of them are going to take the same value. So that is this the function u here is going to be simply this quantity where this quantity here is 1 upon b minus a. So this uh, PDF is a uh, like a flat in the interval a and b. That means if you interpret in terms of the intensity at every point, the intensity is kind of the same here and anything outside we are not assigning any probability. So you can just see that the mean of this is going to be simply the average of these two points and the variance you can compute like this. So where do you want to use such a distribution? Like say, uh, let us say in terms of the temperature right like uh, often like uh, what did you, uh, we can say that uh, the temperature of a day may be like uh, uniformly distributed uh, in uh, 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 so, so not necessarily like a temperature. Let's say anything uh, you want to up, want to apply, like let's say pressure on something. The amount of the pressure that uh, this guy can sustain could be any uniformly bit, uh, distributed between the two extremes. Let's say some minimum amount of pressure and some maximum amount of pressure. It could be taking uh, equally, like it can break at any of this amount of pressure equally likely. So this is one possibility. Other uh, anything other useful things you can think of, like maybe like uh, like fine. You are, you have grades like A, B, C, D. These are discrete, but think of uh, instead of this, think of these are numbers between one to ten. I can think of like the distributions could be uniformly like any the distribution of the marks could be uniformly in, in between uh, 1 and 10. Can I use that? Yes, good. So you want to be uniformly distributed, your marks between 1 and 10. Okay, fine. That is uh, and then comma. And uh, then in alpha and real. So the PDF of this so actually when you have this uh, Bernoulli toss right we have only head and tail. Suppose you assume it is a fair coin that is taking head is half and also tail is half. So then we can say that both my outcomes are equally likely right or my head and tails are like uh, uniformly distributed that is in the discrete version. 
So, what we are uh, now talking about is a uh, uniform uh, distribution in the continuous domain where any value in this interval is like equally likely. Okay. So, PDF is alpha to the power n. And you can find that its characteristic function is. This mean happens to be and. So another useful distribution is gamma distribution. So, it has again uh, defined on for n integer and for any x which is uh, non negative valued. Gamma n, this is a gamma function where gamma is defined like this. Okay. So, what is the useful of uh, this function? So, it so happens that gamma function is related to exponential distribution in what manner? If you are going to take gamma to be n alpha, this is related to exponential distribution through uh, it so happens that this distribution can be expressed as sum of n exponential distribution with parameter is with parameter alpha. So, if you are going to take this gamma to be alpha and add such uh, n exponential distribution then you will end up with gamma distribution. It needs another requirement that these are independent uh, further we will define what we mean by independent today later in the class. So, if we add n independent exponential distributions with parameter gamma then we will end up a distribution which is gamma n alpha. Okay. Last one is it's PDF is So, its characteristic function is a bit complicated, I am not expressing here. Okay, so, how what is this uh, Raleigh distribution? So, this Raleigh distribution, I think uh, I am not going to use this much, but this may be useful to this communication network people. It so happens that it comes very handy when you have to deal with multiple Gaussian distributions. It so happens that this gamma dist Raleigh distribution with parameter sigma square is nothing but. The annual up of uh, okay, so it is going to be so. So, so first, let me explain this. So, if x and y happens to be Gaussian distributed with parameter mu and sigma square, where mu is set to zero, 
that's like the sigma square is going to be same as this sigma square. So then it so happens that the distribution of this turns out to be this Rayleigh distribution. So okay, suppose you are dealing with uh, let us say two quantities random variable x and random variable y which are both Gaussian independent mean 0 variance sigma square and if you need to happen to deal with such a quantity. So instead of looking at each of the separately you need to end up with so this is like uh, what this is x square plus y square will give what to you kind of circle right and you want to take a square of that and you want to understand uh, this is kind of a radius of this circle right you want to understand uh, if at all it has a constant radius this radius could be varying you want to understand how that radius is distributed it so happens that that is can be characterized this Rayleigh distribution okay so it so happens that uh, for a, the, it can be thought of as instantaneous value of n of of a zero mean narrowband noise fine so okay now just quickly coming back to this uniform distributions so uniform distributions when it is going to be useful uniform distribution you want to use when among the possibilities you do not have any prior information for example let us say I let us say tomorrow Mumbai's temperature is going to be between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius but I do not have any prior information like uh, what it is going to be like let us forget I do not have any I, I just born today and I have to choose a, what is going to be the temperature tomorrow and I was told that it will be something between 20 to 30. So if I do not have any a prior information what I am going to do is I am going to think that everything is equally possible I do not have any prior information right in that case when, when you have to deal with a situation when you have to model some randomness about which you do not have any prior information you would go with uniform distributions. For example in this case exponential like when I take a lifetime IP bulb I know that as time progresses the, the probability that the bulb will break down is going to increase right but uh, in such case like suppose I do not have any such information. Well, I, let us say I have a bulb and I do not know like it can break down any time within a 0 to let us say uh, 100 seconds if that is the case then I would go and like to model it as a uniform distribution okay if I do not have any prior information maybe that uniform distribution comes very handy to us. Mm -hmm.